you know what the true best build in Baldur's Gate is? Wacky waving inflatable arm flailing tube man. Wacky waving inflatable arm flailing. Okay, okay, maybe it's not quite that, but it is hilarious every time I see that cast animation. But I will not leave you hanging for utterly bonkers, broken, best, fun, and powerful builds I will be bringing you today. I utterly adore the theory crafting of setups trying to connect all of the dots into a web of magnificence in really any game I play. I am a true theory crafter crafter at heart, but in D&D and by extension Baldur's Gate 3, oh, are the tools there beyond most anything I've ever played to do some really beautiful things. And that's exactly what I've been doing. So I want to share with you guys five absolutely phenomenal builds, if I do say so myself, that all have a full, dedicated, in-depth guide on already up, if any of them take your true liking, that I cannot recommend enough for their combination of both just fun and utter dominance that they let you command. So, first and foremost, <coughs> it's true darkness. This is something I was very, very pleased with, especially when it worked as well as I hoped it would when I first noticed that at level 11 on your Beastmaster, your Raven Companion specifically does something very neat when it lands from simply using its fly mobility, and that is put down a cloud of darkness that lasts a couple turns. Given that the Raven has massive amounts of mobility, can dash with both its action and bonus action, you can do a lot of little fly hops every single turn, enough to keep the battlefield permanently blanketed in massive amounts of darkness. So that's already awesome. You combine that then with a little infusion of cleric for that 12th level just to get you a little bit of proficiency, some useful cleric spell options, it's war cleric for an extra attack per turn, then the core 11 ranger beastmaster decked out in some powerful equipment too, including the legendary bow, but most importantly, a item that makes you immune to blindness, either the ring or the Helldusk helmet, and then you can live forever in your kingdom of shadow, having everyone unable to fire at you inside it, and everyone who dares to come in next to you has permanent disadvantage, and you just don't get hit while you slowly decimate. And how do you decimate? Well, remember that little cleric confusion? That gives us create water, which lets us then use lightning arrow three, four, five times a fight to obliterate literate groups of enemies. It's just this really neat little combo of some very obscure and understandably overlooked mechanics, especially of the Beastmaster's permanently upgrading companions through the levels that I think is absolutely magic. So, following that then, we're gonna be talking ultimate surprise. If you thought a paladin couldn't be an assassin, well, clearly, you've just not multiclassed a paladin into an assassin rogue. It's, it's really that easy, guys. And when you do that, you get something really quite fun. Oh, and there's a little bit of a warlock in here, too, that we'll get to. But the basic principle is to use the massive amounts of charisma scaling to do massive amounts of damage, along with a special weapon that extra scales with charisma, along with the assassin's ability to start a surprise round with all of its resources and get guaranteed crits on everything that it does, meaning that we can run around with the infusion of rogue, crit smiting every enemy until we run out of options and we have a lot of them from this mission, and then the Warlock that is a little bit of the old one gives us the ability to AoE fear 
every enemy whenever we crit them, which we're guaranteed to do because of the assassin. So you start the fight, you crit, obliterate every enemy that you see and fear every enemy that's still standing, and then by the second turn, you've essentially already won. It's the ultimate out of nowhere, we are in control, and half of everyone is dead. And it really is quite enjoyable. Past that, this might be thematically, or at least in the pure entertainment of piloting it, my favourite build just ever. This is what happens when you take some mushrooms and make them really, really angry. Okay, this is another thing that happens when you take mushrooms and make them really angry. You wouldn't have thought that combining a barbarian, a I don't do cast or concentrate, I just ra stab, with a pure spellcaster like a druid would work. Or I should say a non-moon druid, as barbarian into a wild shape animal form is fairly common and very potent. But in this case, it's a wild heart barbarian with a spore druid. The uh, bear heart means that we have actually more effective uh, symbiotic entity health than if we were a pure level 12 spore druid. And most importantly of all, all of the spore class features are castable while raging. We can raise the fungal zombies. We can do the reaction necrotic damage circle of spores. We can keep re-symbioting entity up throughout the fight, which is an action and starting raging is a bonus action, so we always get to start powerfully. And the piece de resistance here is the special spore keeper armor that you can get that gives you three special spores. One of them is an AoE haste for you and your teammates that you can use every turn. You just dip in and out of it and the AI doesn't use it because they don't care about it. So you put it out the way on the battlefield and you just have this pool of double action for everyone to make use of. Then you can befuddle everyone which makes them just a free kill as they laugh as they die. And and uh, you can drop clouds of poison. Poison doesn't affect you because you've still got the access to druid spells. You can buff yourself up with long strider, enhanced drump, resistance uh, to poison, and freedom of movement, then start raging, keep all of those boons, and just be this unstoppable spore tank, ruining people with 23 strength thanks to the gauntlets, the legendary greatsword, and reckless double attacking every turn with your haste spores, and we have of great weapons master and savage attacker to really get the point across with our blade. It's this really neat combo where we get to run around as an unstoppable uh, barbarian while being backed up and casting and using all of this spore magic even while raging. So, next up in our line of death dealing options is a bit of a classic, but one that is taken to the next level thanks to the items in Baldur's Gate 3. It is simply, I want to do magic missiles and I want them to do as much damage as possible. Can I have them one shot every boss? Okay, I can! And that's it. We do that. That's that's what happens. The amount of damage you can stack into magic missile is absurd. You can get up to 400 damage with one level 6 cast and then do another one with the self haste that's on you. You use things like the spell might gloves which shouldn't work with magic missile but do give you an extra 1d8 per missile. You're an evocation wizard at level 11 giving you a real reason to be a high level wizard over just the one dip and learning scrolls. Uh, as that adds your int modifier to the magic missile's damage per one. We dual wield uh, Falara Louvre and Marco Heshkia to do the extra thunder damage and lightning charge damage at the same time, playing with that feat, which is uh, not as common and gives you uh, that perfect Gandalf aesthetic, which I think we can all agree is a solid one to have at any given time, and a few others just uh, mixed and matched, like the Radiant Rings that uh, essentially result in each missile doing about 30 to 50 damage as they machine gun into your poor enemy. And because you can spread them out, it's great for groups too. And you can cast it with every spell slot every turn 
turn, so you just maintain that power throughout the fight on top of having three level six casts a day. And then all your other spell choices can just be support or utility or buffs or control, as the only damage you need is the magic missile. And in a game where only like two enemies the entire time use shield, yeah, this gets the job done ruthlessly efficiently. But it's not quite as dominating as going a different type of wizard, Abjuration, in its perfect form. You guys really love this one, and I can't resist putting it here just to really, really hammer it home, because if there was any build in the game that I genuinely believe could solo the game on Tactician effortlessly, this is it. You just do not take damage unless you get hit for 51 or more, which even when you get crit, basically never happens. Every time you do get hit, you reflect up to 100 damage, a minimum of about 70 guaranteed. We have a little bit of Cleric in here for a reaction, a Thunderbolt from Tempest, and that Create Water to double the cold reflecting of Armor of Agathes and your cold flame shield, we stack up uh, the barrier from Abjuration, which reduces all damage we take. We keep pumping out counter spell and a glyph of warding to build more stacks as we go through the fight, and we just can't really be stopped. You don't lose the armor of Agathes bonus health because you don't take damage, especially not when you get to the final act and you can get the armor of persistence, which gives you permanent blade ward. Yeah, the one sorcerer for Agathes, the one Tempest Cleric for water and the lightning damage reaction, and then 10 pure levels of Abjuration Wizard, which gets you to the ability to short rest and just gain 10 stacks, which is really useful. And past that, you just run around the place. We even give it a Julius prerogative so that we can attack and then double attack as if we were a martial class with the bonus action every turn. It gives us some really good melee options on top of all of the spells and the generally just being unstoppable. And then the compelled jewel makes people attack you, which then causes them to kill themselves with the reflection damage. It's just kind of ludicrous. There's no real weakness here. You counter casters with counter spell and just your actual quite effective stabby abilities. And then nothing else can hurt you and everything takes up to 100 damage a time they attempt it. And you can just walk through levels as everyone crumbles in a sort of, oh, um, mm, uh, I don't know, panic, and it is beyond amusing to feel like this much of a pure god. So I cannot recommend it enough if you want a real power trip, and I think objectively speaking, it is hard to come up with something just all round better. You can do more damage, like even the Magic Missile one in this very video, but as a complete package, there are very few ways to outdo this, even for you tavern brawling monks out there. So, I hope you have enjoyed this look at five delicious options for your boulders gatoring, and have fun with whichever, if indeed any, you decide to give a spin to. For now then, like if you've enjoyed this, subscribe and hit the bell for more, consider supporting the future of the channel on Patreon down below, and until we meet again, a good Josh, yeah. Cotton, and Hollow with the videos Dropping the humor like a hammer on your tippy toes Bringing entertainment on a daily arrangement To take our insanity and turn it into entertainment Yes, I said entertainment twice To reiterate that it is nice To look into your faces on a mostly daily basis When you let us in your homes to make the whole world a stage Is, uh, goodbye